Hi, this is Joe from JRX and this is the second video that I've made for the JRX Bell 407 for X-Plane 11 and X-Plane 12. This is the video guide and cockpit tour. Let's begin. Once you've purchased the JRX products, you'll download it from the store. That will be zipped. You're going to need to extract the contents of the zip file and copy it into your X-Plane 11 or X-Plane 12 folder. In this example here, I have X-Plane 11 and I've extracted mine to aircraft. That's me and here. Whilst we're in the folder structure, there is another folder called Documents. There's lots of information there, including the startup and shutdown checklists. There's also a folder called Paint Kit. This is compressed because it's quite large. But in there are some PSDs for all things painting and livery creation. And I'm going to do a separate video on that. And the rest of the items in here are everything that makes up the aircraft. And you shouldn't really be going too deep into these folders. But I will be doing another video on some other items where we're going to go in and have a look at some of the scripts. Once you've installed the aircraft into the respective X-Plane folder, you just need to start up the application. And in the aircraft area, you should see the new JRX Bell 407, and it will say for X-Plane 11 or X-Plane 12. They will be two separate files. And the current version number. We just need to start the flight. Flight will load with you sat in the cockpit, but before we take to the controls, we're going to need to set up a few things within X-Plane first. We can come up to the top right and click Settings. We'll start with the joystick. For the X-Plane 11 version, the throttle needs to be set as wing sweep, normally with the axis reversed. Pedals are the standard yaw, collective, collective, the pitch and the roll should be set as they are here. If you wish to set any response curves to any of the axes, then you can. Uh, but everything that I've done is been vanilla straight out of the box without anything changed. If we come down to control sensitivity, this is the default settings that we've been using for testing. And again, you're quite welcome to change anything that suits your needs. Just a point here for X-Plane 12, we don't need to have wing sweep. We will actually use the throttle. I've also created quite a comprehensive list of commands that you can assign to any device or hardware controllers that you use. You'll find these in keyboard under 407. If you type in 407 here, you should see everything that has been created. As we go through the update process, some people will ask for additional commands, which I will most likely add. And finally, one last setting in the graphics, because we're using real lights, then we need to have HDR selected here as a minimum. If it's anywhere below, some of the lights may not be showing. And let's talk about the configuration tablet. If we click this button here, we have a tablet style interface which will help us set up the aircraft and change the options i've changed the field of view out to about 110 degrees the default is 60 within x plane some things here might look a little bit odd that's not the graphic work that's just the field of view so we can see a lot more during the video this is the tablet interface these buttons around the side are for use with the rxp gtn we have two main menus, the AVI tab and the livery section. Let's start with the main menu, page one, which is this one here. Most things will be self-explanatory. If I feel I need to mention anything, I'll go into each item just a little bit deeper. We move before flight. We can click this or we can go outside and we can click on any of the the covers to take them on and off. A point to note about these is that they will only work if the rotor brake is on. If we turn the rotor brake off, then they no longer apply. The ground power unit. I have simulated flat battery. If you leave the aircraft static too long with things on, the battery will eventually draw down. And if that's the case, then we're going to need to use the GPU to start. For the GPU, the battery switch needs to be off. And if we select the GPU, 
the battery will come on. Sorry, the power will come on. And we should have a steady 28 volts in the voltage display. Fly with Copilot. There he is. We have the option to choose between crew headsets or crew helmets. Headsets. Or helmets. Passengers. We now have two passengers in the rear. We can have up to four. There's four seats in the back. And there's no reason why I will not add any more at a later date. Dual flight controls, exactly what it says. You can move over to the left seat to fly. Let's just turn the co-pilot off there. Doors on or off. They're either all off or all on. There's no in between. The searchlight is located to the rear fuselage there. It's controlled by a switch on the collective here. And there is a movement controller to the right hand side of the collective. We can also assign commands to your hat switch or any device that you use to control the searchlight. Emergency floats, if you're flying over water on a regular basis, you should ideally have these. We can turn them on here. You'll see that they've now appeared there and to activate them, you need to do the following. Check up on the overhead. There is a floats armed switch here. We will have an annunciator light there to say that the floats are armed. And then just here on the collective, guarded is the switch. And we have our emergency floats. And to pack them away, we just need to do everything in reverse. Drop the guard down, that will flick the switch back up, go back up to the overhead and unarm the floats. And we should have them all packed away nice and neatly. Wire cutters, let's have a look at them. Top and bottom, pretty standard helicopter wire cutters. The rotor dampener, you may have seen many images of a Bell 407. Some have the cap over the top of the rotor hub and some don't. That is the rotor dampener. It's not simulated in this version, so adding it won't make any difference to the flight model. That's with it on. And that's with it off. So for the RXP GTN 750, the options here we can access it from that menu or there is a shortcut button there. If you do not own this module from Reality XP, then you will just have a blank black screen if you click on that option. The autopilot unit, click this here, we get a small unit appear at the bottom very similar to one that was in the BO-105. I'm not going to talk too much about this on the ground. We can do that when we go up into the air for a flight. And last in this little section here is the AVI tab. Excellent freeware add-on that you can use in every aircraft in X-Plane. I've made it so that it goes to a better orientation for the map. And I've also added some flight information to the bottom. Now, if you have a VOR or any radio destination set, it will come up here as well. Back to the menu. And finally, on this page, we have kind of the standard panel layout. I have seen 
many, many different types of layout, colors, and configurations. We can have a darker panel, and this can be changed on the fly, which incorporates the NVG style glass as well over some of the main instruments. That's just down to a personal preference. And on menu page one, we have engine exceedances, which are modeled on this aircraft. If you fly the aircraft and you fly outside of any of the given parameters or envelope for the torque, the MGT or the NG, you will cause an engine exceedance. Now in real life, these gauges have memory. And when we press the instrument check button, we're looking to see the last exceedance and we can see here on the MGT the temperature has gone to 797 so that's triggered an exceedance now in real life these have to be reported and they are checked by ground crew maintenance people and where necessary they may carry out some sort of investigation as to why an exceedance has occurred so we have kind of simulated that and the only way we can clear an exceedance is on the ground with the battery on or power and we come to here and we just click reset that's now cleared from the instrument and when we press the instrument check light we have a clear board of exceedances i plan to speak some more about these gauges when we're in the air because there's a few more things i can show you so we can go into a bit more depth with them when we take it up and apply finally on the exceedances these values are non-volatile which means if you create an exceedance and exit x plane and come back and fly again at another time them exceedances will still be there before they're reset that's everything for now on menu page one we can go to menu page two and have a look at that i've created some default fuel loads that you can choose a lot quicker than going up through the menu to the weight load and balance screens you can select fuel here as long as you're on the ground you can choose any of these options this section here on the left with the figures is information only it is dynamic so if you change any aircraft configuration then weights will change here if you like to fly heavy or light, you can actually trim the weights up or down in this section here. This last section here on menu page two is more system based. You can trim the aircraft's center of gravity. You can change the field of view if you're flying in 2D. This will obviously not work in VR. And you can choose the level of vibrations. Now the reason why I've added this is because I had a lot of feedback on vibrations. Some say they're too weak, some say they're too strong, some say they make them feel sick. Can we turn them off? And now, yes, Yes, you can and this can be changed any time on the ground or in the air and it's off times one times two and times three finally on the tablet section we have a liveries button if you didn't know you could always change the livery of any aircraft without exiting back to the menu you can set up a hotkey to change delivery on the fly i've just taken this one stage further where you'll get a small preview and you can change liveries as you see each time i change these you'll see the registrations change as well but i want to make a little bit more of an in-depth video about painting paint kits and liveries because there's a little bit more involved for this to continually work correctly but i will cover that in another video for the people who like making aircraft liveries and there we go that's pretty much all i'm going to cover for now on the tablet okay next we'll move on to the cockpit tour i put the gpu on so we have some power should i need to show you any functions of the aircraft and we can begin Let's come into the panel and we will start at the top left. Now I've added a button here with the word doors on. That purely just opens and closes all the doors in one go. I've added this because some of the doors are quite hard to reach from the cockpit seat and it's just for your convenience. Coming next to the annunciator panel, the warning lights, we press to test here. These lamps can be dimmed. If we come up to the overhead, there is a caution dim switch here. Click that down and we have the lamps dimmed. We've already spoken about the tablet access. The button is just here. 
Coming down onto the main panel now, we have the radio altimeter. This is located to the top left. We can change the height bug settings in 50 foot increments. When we fly below this, we will have a warning lamp only. This instrument is powered by a switch on the overhead panel right at the very back, just here. We can now see that the lamp is on since we powered up. Next is the M803. This is a multi-function display which incorporates the following functions. At the top we have outside air temperature and volts. This is the volt section. We can switch between Fahrenheit and centigrade. If we come down to the lower half, if we can use the select button to cycle through. Universal time local time, flight time and elapsed time. The elapsed time is effectively a stopwatch timer that can be accessed just off to the left and the right of the control. So click to start, click to stop, click to reset. Coming across the top to these three buttons here. The first one is the LCD test for the instruments. This has been covered on the startup and the shutdown tutorial. The next one is the instrument check, which will show you for any exceedances. And finally, we have the horn mute button here, which will mute all warning horns. Coming over to the left side of the panel, we have two lighting rear stats. There is an LED strip under the panel. We have white or green. Coming down we have the FADEC mode switch. We can change this to manual. Or we can go back into auto. There is a quick way to do this. We can just shut the cover. The fuel quantity check button. This is the main tank display here and press the button for the forward tank. FADEC overspeed test and FADEC horn mode test. We have a group of seven instruments to the left side of the panel. These are engine monitoring instruments effectively. The current torque load the MGT, mean gas temperature, the NG or N1 speed of the engine. We have fuel pressure, pounds per square inch and fuel temperature. And likewise for the transmission, we have the pounds per square inch and the transmission temperature. We've spoken about the fuel. We have fuel pressure here and the current amp loading drawer. Moving on now to the flight instruments, we have the airspeed indicator in knots. We have the artificial horizon with a horizon adjustment button in the middle and the pull for quick erect. Unfortunately, I haven't found a way for this to work in X-Plane. There is a reference for it, but it doesn't seem to do very much. And we have the altimeter. We have the millibars on the left window and the inches of mercury on the right with an adjuster here. And if we want to check standard pressure, we just push the center there and that should set that accordingly. Coming down below, we have the NR and the MP, which is the rotor and the engine speed. This is the RPM in percent. In the middle, we have the HSI. This is tied to three things, nav one, nav two, or the GPS. And next to that, we have the vertical speed indicator, which is in feet per minute from zero to 4,000 plus or minus. And as mentioned before, we have the slave switch, which will provide the source for the primary compass. And below that, we have the free or slaved switch, which isn't implemented in this version. Coming down to some standby navigation instruments, we have ADF1 and ADF2 here, and we have a VOR gauge here, which is tied to nav one. Down to the bottom right now, we have the turn and slip indicator. We have the navigational source display. Below that, we have the pedal stop test, 
which is explained in greater detail on the startup and shutdown video. We have the emergency location transponder. This is not modeled in X-Plane. And finally, we have the fuel valve. Coming up now to the overhead switch panel. As we mentioned before, at the rear is a radar out power. None of the circuit breakers are currently modeled in this version. I have done it before for the JRX B0105, but these have not been done yet. None of the FLIR or the camera equipment switches are modeled yet and down to the switches. Left and right fuel boost pumps, logo lights, these are modeled. The float switch that is modeled. Avionic master switch is modeled. Attitude gyro is modeled. The TB is not modeled. The instrument rear stat lighting switch is modeled. The force trim is modeled. The air condition is modeled. The air condition low and high switches are modeled. The heater can't really be modeled anyway. The caution lights we've spoken about, they are modeled. Uh, the cabin light for the rear passenger is modeled. Position lights are modeled. The defog can't be modeled in the simulation environment. The pitot heater is modeled. The engine anti-ice is modeled and so is the particle separator. The hydraulic switch is modeled, the auto trim is modeled, anti-collision strobe and pulse lights are modeled and obviously the generator and the battery they are fully functional within X-Plane. Continuing up the top the rotor brake is functional and we have a cabin flood lamp which is also fully functional. All doors and windows are functioning. There will be a sound difference between a door open, a door closed or a window open and a window closed. And they can be accessed both from the outside and the inside. Just want to speak about a couple of things now. If you should have any problems activating or triggering switches, we can go to view and show instrument click regions and this will give the old green highlight of where everything needs to be clicked and whilst we're talking about switches i have added persistence to over 85 maybe 90 items so if you leave the aircraft with a certain switch or group of switches on or off when you come back to your next session inside x-plane they will be where you left them. This is known as persistence. Coming down to the pedal stool now, we have navigation and radios. The standard GNS 530 is here with a custom surround. It works exactly the same as the default one in X-Plane. The COM and NAV radios. We have COM1 and COM2, NAV1 and NAV2. You might notice that the vehicle registration is programmed into the unit. That's a real life event that can happen and I'll be showing you how to do that when I do the painting and paint kit tutorial video. For the radios on COM2, I've added some ATC chatter on the 118 frequency. For that to work, you have to make sure the following the avionics master switch is on the headsets being worn 118000 is our primary frequency and we have the COM2 audio monitor switched on just here Coach American uh, 2006 we're with you uh, descending at 17000 descending via the uh, arrival and we have information both requesting the RNAV RNT Below the radios we have the audio selection panel. These are all default stock X-Plane audio panel commands. 
We have next the Bendix King KT74 transponder off standby and on. So there is no transmission whilst it's on standby. If we bring it to on, we should see the transmissions going just here on the left side. If you're a Vatsim flyer and you need to ident, you can punch in your squawk code and click ident. This then transmit. I think it's for 11 to 18 seconds. Coming now to a few items which are under the collective. We have the ADF frequency selector radio of the Bendix King DME for distance measuring to any radio navigation frequencies you're using and finally we have the Hobbs meter when you get your version of this aircraft it will be set at zero but mine's on 290 hours of testing so far we have the standard flight controls for the Bell 407 aircraft we do have a fully functioning throttle with the idle release which is functional i've assigned a command for this button and i just want to talk very briefly about its operation bnx plane 11 the throttle axis is assigned to wing sweep users may use the keyboard or they may use other axes to control the throttle for x plane 12 it's going to need to be set to throttle throttle equals throttle and we do have a slight anomaly when we're closing and shutting the aircraft down so to begin if i turn the throttle to idle that's okay i can go up to fly i can make the flight and then i can come back now if i fully close my throttle it's going to be held by the idle release now, if you know i've got a key assigned for the idle release if i press the button in the throttle will snap all the way closed which is not ideal now there are some settings in the controls for x-plane controllers where you can set your own throttle detents basically translate to you open the throttle but when you close it it's not fully closed and that's something that you're going to have to look into and set up for yourself all i do to get around this is i operate the throttle normally it will stop at the idle make the flight come back but when i now go to shut the fuel off I just roll the throttle forward very slightly to about there. I then press the idle release and it won't instantly snap to off. And now I can turn it all the way to off. It's not great, but it's all we've got at the moment and it does work okay. And whilst we're at the collective, we'll just talk about some of the switches on the collective head. Searchlight switch on and off. Landing lights is a three-way switch. There's two exterior landing lights under the nose and the start switch which is covered on the startup and shutdown tutorial and to the right side of the collective we have a china hat style switch which will control the searchlight direction all of these switches of course you can apply commands to from the keyboard settings next to the collective we have some controls the collective friction is not modeled the heater defrost valve is not modeled the cargo release emergency is not modelled but when I do add a cargo hook at a later update that will become functional and we also have the collective lock which is modelled. And I think that concludes the cockpit tour part of the video. It's not a flying lesson, it's just showing you what we've included, what's working and what's not working. And I think it's best now if we go into the air next to have a look at some of these items in action. Okay, here we are up at 8,000 feet on the autopilot. I've opened up the field of view, I've also turned down the engine sound so I do not get the round out and we can go through a few items in the air whilst we're flying. Let's speak about the autopilot unit first. We shouldn't really use this like an airline autopilot. It does work, it works very well, but you need to be at a stable height and speed. The aircraft needs to be in trim and you're going to control the speed with the collective and when you do that you need to introduce the increments quite slowly and let the AP catch up. We do have the standard AP modes. We're currently on heading hold. The AP indicator here the in green is showing that the autopilot servos are controlling the aircraft and we're in altitude hold mode. The other modes are functional. We can use full nav radio navigation. We can do a full approach 
and we also have the IAS which I haven't implemented because again it causes problems with control of the aircraft uh, we have the vertical speed and the terrain following which doesn't seem to work inside X-Plane should we wish to change height we just need to click vertical speed and we can use the up and down buttons to control our rate let's have a look at that we're climbing up now very gradually should be around about 150 feet per minute and to cancel that off we can either click altitude or bring this back down to zero we'll just click altitude in this instance the head and hold is controlled by the bug which is this knob here if we swing this round to the west come out the AP will turn us nice and gently around to the selected heading You need to be patient with it give it time to catch up and settle down but otherwise it works quite well and it will help you on your much longer flights it's quite important that when you finish with the autopilot unit I'll show an example now we'll take the head in and the altitude hold off note that the AP is still turned on should we try and make control inputs they're going to be very sluggish the aircraft is going to want not to do what you want I'm trying to turn now and it won't turn and that's because the autopilot servos are still on please ensure that the AP is fully off and now I have full manual control I mentioned earlier about the additional items that I added to the AVI tab and at the bottom of the map we have some basic flight information altitude ground speed heading the bearing to the currently tuned radio destination which in this case is Guernsey the distance and the estimated time on route we can also look at our three gauges that will give us exceedances and we mentioned earlier the torque the MGT and the NG if the instrument or the aircraft thinks we're approaching an exceedance we get what's called a flashing trend arc I'm raising the collective right now as we speak and one of them three is going to warn us that we are approaching an engine exceedance there we go the NG hasn't exceeded yet but it is on its way when we see any of the flashing trend arcs all we need to do is back off what we've done so in this case I'm just going to lower the collective bringing it down until the flashing trend arc stops and there we go and in this example we now try to create an exceedance so you can see what happens pulling in the power again there's the warning Okay, so the aircraft's vibrating quite strongly now. We have a the torque is coming up to its exceedance range, and there it is. So we had an exceedance there at the prescribed amount in the manual. We're just going to back off. Once that exceedance is recorded, I think it displays for 11 seconds initially and then every time you power on the aircraft it will also be displayed and obviously when you press the instrument check button let's get everything settled back down so if we press the instrument check button now we have three recorded exceedances one on each of the gauges I think the one on the MGT is an older legacy one from a previous flight and these exceedances cannot be cleared in the air they have to be on the ground with power provided to the aircraft and that's the current record of the three exceedances held 
we saw some vibrations in action there as the aircraft speeded up so we can talk about them now menu page two at the bottom we do have the vibration levels and as mentioned earlier we have off times one times two and times three that is times three I'm not sure how it come out on the recording hopefully it'll be okay times two times one which is my preferred option or off let's speak a bit about aircraft trim now we're currently flying with the AP and I don't know how well this is going to come out on the video but we've got the data refs up here so we can see any changes and the AP is currently controlling the elevator trim now I have assigned some commands to my hat switch these won't work just for now because the AP is on if I push the hat switch to the right you can see that the Aeolon trim is going into the positive and back to the left it's going into the negative and the same for the nose up and the nose down I have also set a reset button so that should clear them if we turn the AP off now we should see the trim working manually if I reset this the nose may drop down so I'm not going to reset it just yet so if we want to roll to the right and hold that roll there we go that's the trim using the manual method with the China hat switch and back if we want to use the force trim where we press a button and move the cyclic into a position we can do that press the button now put the stick forward and to the right and you can see the values have now set there where we set that before we drop out of the sky and there we go that's the trim commands that are included with this aircraft okay so I think there's more than enough for you to be getting on with there I've droned on long enough the video's almost over 35 minutes Remember that you've got all the documentation that you can refer back to in the JRX aircraft folder. There's also the JRX forums where you can contact me and or you can leave comments with this video. But until then, until the next video, happy flying and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.